two of kind of slowing down, cleaning things up, getting organized again, ordering new clay, doing some glaze tests, and now we're back into the thick of it. We're building the uh, bridge panels for the mill race bridge, and this one's going to be about the life cycle. No, it's not. This one's not going to be about the life cycle of golfers. This one's <laughs> going to be about the history of the Brackham Ridge Golf Course. And so we're going to um, make some panels that are more warm colors, and um, they're going to semi depict kind of an art deco period because the, the uh, golf course was built in the 1920s and on the Broadway corridor there's a lot of buildings that have art deco. However, it does have a feel of art deco but I think you could also it's kind of get more of a rustic feel to it and I was thinking it really looks like things like at the Majestic Theater in San Antonio. It's got that kind of robust chunkiness to it. Um, so it's, it's not Victorian and it's not Art Deco, it's kind of just a, a hybrid of little things. I think it fits really nicely in the rustic nature of the part that was built in the 20s um, with convict labor. So I think that's kind of the perfect thing. So uh, this is the little mock-up that we did, um, all warm colors. And then from that, we've made some kind of test tiles that are similar. And so these are kind of the, the format that we're going for. And then also we've done some more tests here just to figure out the color schemes. And, and it's looking like we're going to be able to once fire these tiles. And the last bridge, we, we it all depends on the glaze, if you can do that or not. But the last bridge, we bisque fired it, then came back, glazed it, and glaze fired it. So each one got fired twice. This time, we're just going to do a really slow firing, but only fire at one time. So it's going to save a lot of, of loading, unloading, glazing, and firing. And I guess it will cut down our energy use to make the bridge in half. And so that's, that's always a good thing to do if we can. Um, one reason we're doing, another reason we're doing this is this glaze, when it's once fired, is a little earthier than it is when it's fired on top of bisque. And I think it's because all the pollutants in the clay actually come up and affect the glaze a little bit. And so I think that earthiness that's going to add to that glaze is actually going to make the bridge look better than if it were slicker. And so um, it's nice when you're saving fuel and the, and the end product looks better. I think that, that's a no-brainer. So, um, so to, that's what we're going to do. We're going to move forward and, and work on those tile today. Where's that tile that added one thing to what we were doing that we didn't do before is we started rolling pinning it but I think that makes a difference. So this is the rolling pin is gonna add a little more pressure. Help make sure it's all in. So we're doing that now and then scraping it. The 
rolling pin makes it contact and makes it one piece of clay, but there's really no way you can get clay level except for scraping it with serrated and grit because that takes clay off the high areas and deposits on the low areas. And you just keep doing it until it scrapes it smooth. Now if we took a cross section and cut this, you wouldn't see any seams. It would be one smooth, complete piece of clay. So we'll just repeat it about a million times and we'll be done. Chris, uh, Sarah and I order, uh, counted up all the boxes of clay we use for the Mil Mulberry Bridge, the Toad Bridge. And it looks like we used about 2,500 pounds of clay. So it's two and a quarter tons for that bridge. And we'll probably use a little bit more for this one because this one's actually a slightly larger square footage just because of the shape that we're creating. Um, so it look, it's looking like about 2,500 pounds of clay. So it's 50 boxes, it's 100 bags of clay. Right. So we're rolling out 25 pound slabs at a time. So it's, we, that bridge was, Mulberry Bridge was 100 of those. Seems like it should have been Seems like it was more than that. So we're making this one, I think it turns out to be about 66 inches wide and about 2 feet tall. So basically about two by five, so basically it's about 10 square feet um, times 16 panels, which is 160 square feet. And the other one's about two by three, so that's five square feet times eight, so it's 30 square feet. Yeah, so it's about 190, 200 square feet of ceramic work on, on the bridge. on a fancy border for the, the golf one. And this shape is off of the um, clubhouse under the eave of the roof. It's a Tudor style, a, a, what, what would you even call that? I guess a, uh, let's see, you got Spanish Renaissance, which means it was like Spain, Spanish architecture, but not really. I guess this would be Tudor Renaissance architecture. Um, so this is come, this shape is on the clubhouse. And so we're borrowing that motif and we're going to use it for the bridge, which is probably about, I don't know, 50 yards away from the clubhouse. The clubhouse is like sort of a hunting lodge slash English tutor slash civilian comp civilian conservation corps <laughs> architecture. It's great. But I'm liking the double ring because then when we start pushing on it, which we'll do in a little bit, it really it makes it pretty dramatic looking. first and we'll come back and finish them out.
that cut wasn't necessary for the tile sake, but for the grout sake, that was important. Okay, so now I'm going to cut it, take it apart. The clay's like a soft leather hard. So we're going to start over here and, and number it and label it. And let's see, this is the last one in the eight panels that we made for the exterior. So that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't think I had a G though. F, G. G's. 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 G's.